looking here at the Sepultura album, Roots, from 1996. This was their biggest album. So before this, in 93, they released Chaos AD, and I guess that was kind of what uh, semi broke them into the mainstream, although, yeah, I wouldn't go that far, but it was it was uh, their biggest album until that time, and this one uh, pushed them even further into the mainstream. Uh, the sound on this album is quite a departure from the previous album. Sepultura uh, were more of a death metal slash thrash metal band in their early work. But by the time they got to this release, they had um, moved more into, yeah, I'd say almost a new metal kind of sound. Not entirely. And I wouldn't, yeah. Like a lot of new metal bands cite this as a inspiration. And it was produced by um, Ross Robinson, who was the... Uh, the the producer that we that is most closely associated with um with new metal you know if we think about different scenes have their producers like i guess grunge maybe we think of was it jack and dino and to an extent butch vig um what early what <laughs> birth of rock and roll or that memphis uh record uh Memphis recording artist, I guess, you know, you think of Sam Phillips and Sun Records. Well, Ross Robinson was that for new metal. Mixed by Andy Wallace, it says there. When we talked about Andy Wallace, he mixed uh, and produced Jeff Buckley's Grace, as well as many, many, many other albums in the 90s, it seems. Um, this is a special edition because I used to own a regular edition, which is just the typical plastic jewel case CD. And the CD of the regular edition was a brownish yellow color with black. Um, this one is black and white and it's kind of gray silver. I can't actually see there, see that there is much special about this edition. The only things I see is that it has three extra songs. Chaos BC, Symptoms of the Universe, and Kaiwas, which is a live track. Other than that, it's a cardboard case, which I've said my feelings about before. You can see here it's already worn on the on the um, spine. Uh, and it has kind of fold out and more artwork, and the artwork is especially of them together with the, whatever tribe they work together with in the Amazon, all painted up and whatnot. But other than that, it doesn't seem to be that special of any kind of edition. And there's nothing, no extra disc or anything like that. The booklet looks exactly the same as the booklet in the non-special edition. So this was the last album they had recorded with Max Cavalera, the lead, lead uh, vocalist, guitarist. He left during the tour for this album. Um, his wife was the manager of the band, Gloria, and there was tension or friction or whatever. So the other members of the band felt that she wasn't representing them and was maybe focusing too much on Max. And so they wanted to kick her out. That was his wife. He said, no, they split up. Which it probably is not a good idea for your wife to be the manager of a band, is it? Um, although Susan Silver, she was manager of Soundgarden and Chris Cornell and her were married. Um, I don't know if that caused any tension within that band, but, uh, so several tour are <clears throat> Max Cavalera, which is him, uh, Igor Cavalera, his brother, who was the drummer. That's him there. Um, and there. Andreas Kissa, Kissa, who is the lead guitarist. And he is still in the band. And Paolo, don't know if it's from Paolo Jr. is usually how he's listed. And he's the bassist. He's also still in the band. So after Max left, his brother Igor, Paolo, and Andreas, they, they remained in the band and continued making music with a lead, a new lead vocalist, um, Derek Green. 
and are still going to this day. That that version of Sepultura, Igor Cavalera has since left the band. He left about ten years ago, and he's reunited with his brother in um, Cavalera Conspiracy. They've made some records together. Max went on to form Soulfly, and they made some. Um, they made a lot of albums, and they're still going. And um, they were quite new metalish as well in their first couple of albums. First album, especially, basically a new metal album. But um, he's kind of moved more towards early Sepultura sound in the later albums and kind of more thrash. Roots is a good album. And for me, it's an album that kind of got me into more extreme metal, I guess. Up until this point, so I had a friend who liked Sepultura when I was at high school. Up until that point, I liked more alternative rock, rock, hard rock, classic rock, things like that. You know, I like, I've said before, I like Nirvana, Soundgarden, um, Rage Against the Machine, Faith No More, Oasis, Blur, that kind of stuff. That was what I was listening to in high school. And some other, uh, other kind of left field, like a ministry, I like ministry and Nine Inch Nails and I don't. I liked a lot of stuff, but pretty what you would expect for that time from a, a teenage guy. And one of my friends was more into metal, like like Pantera and stuff like that. And I never really. I still don't really like Pan- Pantera. I've never really clicked with Pantera. But anyway, he likes Sepultura. And I remember I used to, you know, we used to hang out at his, his house, and he used to play a lot of metal. I remember especially Sepultura and Meshuga. And gradually over time, I kind of became to appreciate it. And especially through this album, I came to appreciate metal. And then after that, I, you know, I've gone off into, you know, every different kind of metal possible in the preceding 25 years, but, um, proceeding 25 years. But yeah, this, uh, this album is, I guess in that way, I kind of consider important in my musical fandom roots bloody roots of course is one of their most famous songs and i think it's a pretty cool song other songs are rata mahata they made a video for that um sung in portuguese that song usually simple true sing in english but in that song they're a brazilian band and they're singing in their native tongue uh I think other ones like Straight Hate's a good song. Look Away they did with Jonathan Davis and Mike Patton. They guest vocal on, on that. Guest vocalize vocalists on that. Born Stubborn's a good song. Jasco or Yasco, it'd be it's Portuguese, so it'd be Jasco. Is a um acoustic guitar, kind of classical almost guitar song. It's just guitar. It's Andreas Kisser doing like a yeah, acoustic guitar kind of jam. It's Sari. I used to love that song. That's like a Brazilian tribal chant with a little bit of guitar and, and drum added in. But that's a cool song. Uh, Ambush. That's a cool song. I think in general, it's uh, from end to end. It's a it's a pretty good album. Dictator shit. I never really liked that. And Max Cavalera is uses some corny <laughs> some corny puns and play on words. What's the other one he loves to do? politics that's right <laughs> dictator shit and politics it's he, he in a countless songs throughout sepulture and um soulfly he uses these two and there's probably other ones as, as well he uses but yeah it's it's a good album it doesn't veer too wildly into new metal and you know i i like new metal when i was at that age i'm not gonna lie even though it's like considered fucking the uncoolest of the uncool music nowadays, but I loved corn. I fucking loved corn in the late nineties, early two thousands. I I liked Limbiscuit. Who oh, else? Deftones. I don't really consider new metal, but I like Deftones around that era, like around the fur. Um, I like Lincoln Park. Obviously, Sepultura. I know. I wouldn't put them with all those bands I've just listed. You can hear Sepultura riffage and riffing has influenced a lot of those bands, 
but they Sebo Shirov really weren't, for example, rapping or anything like that. Although in Soulfly, <clears throat> they got dangerously close to that. Um, some with some of the, the guest vocalists they had in some of the songs were, I think, were rapping. But um, and then after Max left, Sepultura certainly kind of moved further away from that new metal sound back to what more kind of just extreme metal as they have stayed for since that time um so yeah it's a it's an interesting album it's quite, it was a at the time it came out it was a unique album you can say what you want to say about it but it was they weren't completely ripping anyone off and the sound that they made here um influenced a lot of bands for better or for worse and i think it's got some pretty good songs on it and more than that it was it's i think it's good to have um in the mainstream bands from different cultures and countries so it's not just all american and british you know and i'd say south america is kind of underrepresented underrepresented in um popular music you know, faint, they have they've made it into the mainstream in the West. Really, there aren't that many, are there? I'm going to think about Argentinian or, or Chilean or Brazilian artists. Um, there aren't that many, so it's 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 cool that that a Brazilian group did break through and become you know pretty huge and respected in the um, heavy metal community. And it's a cool, that's a cool album cover as well, I've always thought. It's very iconic. Very original as well. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching Sepultura.